SafeSafe Trainings course outlining tank car loading and unloading of hazardous material. This course covers the protection of the equipment, the inspection of the rail car, loading and attendance requirements, offloading using pressure and proper closure of the equipment. There are five quizzes throughout the course which will require 100% accuracy before moving on. Don't worry, you'll be able to take the quizzes as many as times as necessary to achieve 100%. You will also be able to leave the course at any point and return to the place where you left off. Let's get started. This course will provide requirements for the inspection of tank cars and regulations for the loading and offloading of cars as set forth by the FRA. See Section 49 CFR 173.31 and 174.67. Best practice recommendations from the Association of American Railroads are also used. Renewable Fuels Association guidelines for hinged and bolted manway covers. As thorough as this course is, it is not a complete set of instructions for all situations and car types. Operating personnel must receive appropriate hazmat training as it pertains to the loading or unloading of hazardous material related to the operator's job function. This training must cover the Department of Transportation DOT, regulations pertaining to the loading and unloading of rail tank cars. Hazmat employers must certify that the operators are properly trained and tested. This course provides training pertaining to protecting the track on which the transfer of product is performed, inspecting the equipment, required attendance when rail cars are connected and or transferring product, pressure on loading, and secure the rail car for transport. Blue flag protection. Proper protection of the work area is mandatory when placing any rail car for loading or unloading and before placing any part of your body in a position where your safety could be compromised on top, under, on, or within 25 feet of the end of equipment, you must, according to DOT Regulation 173.31G1, block access to the protected area or track by placing and locking a derail in the derailing position at least 50 feet from the protected equipment or lining and locking the switch permitting access to both ends of the track with a proprietary lock. And according to section 173.31G2, place a blue flag by day or a blue light by night to warn people who may approach the protected equipment. The blue flag must have the word stop in white lettering at least four inches in height. Think of blue flag protection as the lockout tagout when working with rail equipment. The lockout portion is the derail or a switch lined and locked away to physically protect the track. The placement of the blue flag is the tagout portion. It is the notification to personnel that the track or area is protected and to stop. What if the motive power is left on the protected track while the transfer of product is taking place? If the locomotive or car mover is left on the protected track, it must have a blue flag or blue light that is clearly visible from the control position to indicate the equipment is under blue flag protection. A car mover must be in park and have the parking brake set. A locomotive must have the handbrake applied, the reverser centered and removed, and the generator field switch off. Secure the equipment by applying a handbrake to all rail cars placed for loading and block a wheel in both directions with suitable wheel chocks. Electrically grounding. Tank cars containing flammable or combustible gases or liquids or residues of flammable or combustible material must be electrically grounded and bonded during loading or offloading. The grounding connection must stay attached until the tank car closures are secured. The grounding of tank cars carrying other commodities is also strongly encouraged. Leakage containment. The facility or area where the loading or offloading is being performed must be prepared for the possibility of a leak or spill. 
Leakage should be held to a minimum, but the operator must be prepared to capture, collect, and dispose of any material that may leak. If you wouldn't allow this content to seep into your yard, do not allow it to escape into the ground at a transfer site. Now let's take a look at inspecting the tank car, DOT Regulation 173.31-D1. No person may offer for transportation a tank car containing a hazardous material or residue of a hazardous material unless that person determines the tank car is in proper condition and safe for transportation. At a minimum, a person offering a tank car for transport must perform a visual external inspection of the tank car. Damage to the shell will not always be this obvious, of course, so a thorough visual inspection is needed. Look for corrosion, dents or distortions in shell, top and bottom. Also check the ladders, crossover platforms, handhold and uncoupling lever for damage. The rail carrier will not accept a car with these bent components. If the car is sagging, it may indicate a structural failure. Is the car properly stenciled? Is the stenciling legible? If the contents of the car contains a gas or liquefied gas that is non-life supporting, legible stenciling is required. Be certain the inspection date stencil is legible and the car is not overdue for an inspection. In compliance with DOT Regulation 173.31-D1I, except where insulation or a thermal protection system prevents an inspection, inspect the tank shell and heads for abrasions, corrosion, cracks, dents, distortions, defects in welds, or any other condition that would make the tank car unsafe for transportation. Inspect the protective housing and covers for proper alignment and securement. Inspect for failed welds, cracks, abrasions, corrosion, or any other condition that would make the tank car unsafe for transportation. If the commodity being shipped requires a tank car with a half-height shield, ensure a shield is in place and free from defects and is attached to the car securely. Inspect both ends of the tank car to ensure it is equipped with top and bottom shelf couplers. Ensure the tank car has bottom skid protection and is free of defects and corrosion. In compliance with DOT Regulation 173.31-D1II, inspect the piping, valves, fittings, and gaskets for damage, corrosion, or any other condition that makes the tank car unsafe for transportation. Inspect the gasket for imperfections. Inspect the gasket sealing surface for dents or grooves that may allow a leak path for the commodity. Use non-sparking tools. When working in close proximity to flammable or combustible materials, use tools and tool accessories that will not cause or emit a spark. Will the tools you use around flammables cause a spark? 
In compliance with DOT Regulation 173.31D1III, inspect for missing or loose bolts, nuts, washers, or other elements that make the tank car unsafe for transportation. Check fittings. They must be tool tight. In compliance with regulations for pressure relief inspection, inspect the pressure relief device, including a careful inspection of the rupture disc in a non-reclosing pressure relief device for corrosion or damage that may alter the intended operation of the device. The rupture disc is not required to be removed prior to visual inspection if the tank car contains the residue as defined in Regulation 171.8, Definitions and Abbreviations, of a Class 8 Poisonous Gas 2 or Poisonous Gas 3 material with no subsidiary hazard or the residue of a Class 9 Elevated Temperature material and most residue cars in Canada except Class 2. This is an example of a non-reclosing pressure relief device. If the tank car is equipped with a non-reclosing PRD with a rupture disc, remove the disc and inspect both sides of the rupture disc for proper bursting pressure rating, general condition, and integrity. This is a picture of a telltale indicator. If the tank car is equipped with a combination pressure relief device, Check the telltale indicator to determine the integrity of the rupture disc. These telltale devices must be in the closed position prior to transportation. We recommend reviewing literature assembled by the Renewable Fuels Association, guidelines for hinged and bolted manway assembly, assembly instructions for the ethanol industry. If necessary to operate a gauging device, top operated bottom outlet valve, or any other fittings on the top or bottom of the tank car, the operator should not position themselves directly above or below the gauging device, valve, or fitting. If the tank car is equipped with a top operated bottom outlet valve, if practicable, loosen the packing nut and operate the valve to ensure proper operation. If the valve works properly, close the valve and tighten the top packing nut. If the valve is not working properly, repair the valve before loading the tank car. If the tank car is equipped with a bottom operated bottom outlet valve and if practicable, operate the valve to ensure proper operation. By operating the bottom outlet valve, you will also relieve any pressure or vacuum that has built during transport. If the valve is found to be working properly, close the valve. If the valve is defective, repair the valve before loading the tank car. Prior to starting the loading process, be certain the bottom outlet valve is in the closed position. Remove the bottom cap and leave the cap off during the entire loading process to ensure the bottom outlet valve does not leak. Document the rail car inspection and retain a copy of the inspection.
attendance during loading and offloading in compliance with DOT Regulation 174.67i. During the transfer process, a hazmat employee must be present with an unobstructed view of the operation or a monitoring system observed by a hazmat employee capable of immediate notification of an emergency or malfunction. This is a leaking tank car in compliance with DOT Regulation 173.24b4. Each package used for the shipment of hazardous material under this subchapter shall be designed, constructed, maintained, filled, its content so limited, and closed so that under conditions normally incident to transportation, there will be no hazardous material residue adhering to the outside of the package during transport. Lack of attendance allowance. In accordance with DOT Regulation 174.67J, tank cars with protective housing, for example DOT 105 and 112, do not require attendance when piping is attached if all valves are closed tightly. Piping is capped or plugged and not connected to hoses or unloading equipment. Piping does not extend more than 6 inches from the protective housing. In compliance with DOT Regulation 174.67K, when the unloader is absent, unloading connections may be left attached to the car if no transfer of product is being performed, a hazmat employee is on site to monitor, if monitoring system is used, the same as 174.67I, tank car and facility valves are securely closed. If it becomes necessary to delay or halt the transfer of product for a period of time, all valves must be closed, remove all connections, and prepare the tank car as if it were ready for transport. Operations may be discontinued on an attended or monitored car by closing the car and the facility valves without disconnecting hoses or attachments. A rail tank car can be overloaded by exceeding the maximum gross weight for the wheel journal size, which is the load limit or LMT, plus the light weight or tear, or by exceeding the maximum filling limit or filling density standards in the regulations, or by both methods. In compliance with DOT Regulation 173.24b, Except as otherwise provided in this subchapter, liquids and liquefied gases must be so loaded that the outage is at least 5% for materials poisonous by inhalation or at least 1% for all other materials of the total capacity of a tank car at the following reference temperatures. 46 degrees Celsius or 115 degrees Fahrenheit for a non-insulated tank. 43 degrees Celsius or 110 degrees Fahrenheit for a tank car having a thermal protective system incorporating a metal jacket that provides an overall thermal conductance of 15.5 degrees Celsius or 60 degrees Fahrenheit of no more than 10.22 kilojoules per hour per square meter per degree Celsius, 0.5 BTU per hour per square foot, per degrees Fahrenheit, temperature differential, or 41 degrees Celsius, or 105 degrees Fahrenheit, for an insulated tank. An eyewash station is required to be in close proximity to the loading or transfer area. 
A fire extinguisher is required to be in close proximity to the loading or transfer area. In compliance with DOT Regulation 173.31D2, closures on tank cars are required to be designed and closed so that under conditions normally incident to transportation, including the effects of temperature and vibration, there will be no identifiable release of a hazardous material to the environment. In any action brought to enforce this section, the lack of securement of any closure to a tool-tight condition detected at any point will establish a rebuttable presumption that a proper inspection was not performed by the offerer of the car. That presumption may be rebutted by any evidence indicating that the lack of securement resulted from a specific cause not within the control of the offerer. Manway Securement Inspect the hinge assembly for any cracks, bends, or failing welds. Inspect the eye bolt and safety eye bolt threads for corrosion, cracks, wear or galling, especially within one inch of the manway cover. Inspect the hinge bolt for bends. Replace the hinge bolt if it is bent more than a quarter of an inch. Inspect the manway gasket for tears, abrasions, nicks or gouges. Inspect the manway nozzle sealing surface. The surface should not have any large imperfections which may cause a leak path. Replace nuts that are missing or defective. Replace washers that are cuffed or defective. The full face of the washer must contact the cover. Approximately 75% of leaking tank cars are found to be leaking because of improper closures. Eye bolt numbering and tightening procedure. The numbering and tightening sequence procedure is critical in preventing a non-accident leak. The two eye bolts nearest the handle are the safety eye bolts. The two examples are of a 6-bolt and an 8-bolt cover. The tightening sequence must always start with the number 1 safety eye bolt, right side of the handle. Note the five steps in the tightening process in the torque chart. The snug pass, first, second, and third tightening passes are all using the star pattern. The fifth and final pass is a clockwise rotational tightening pattern. Note the different foot-pounds of torque used on a 6-bolt cover compared to an 8-bolt cover. Also note the torque difference when a hard gasket is used compared to a soft or elastomeric gasket. When using an impact driver to tighten bolts on a manway cover, refer to this chart. Note that an impact driver is not to be used when an elastomeric gasket is in place. Securing the vessel in compliance with DOT Regulation 173.31D1IV after properly tightening all closures, apply a seal to the manway cover, protective housing, and the bottom outlet. Document and record the seal numbers. After securing the closures and protective housing, apply an appropriate seal and document the seal number. A photo taken of the seal number is a good way to document. Nitrogen pad. When pressure is used to offload a tank car, relieve all pressure with the exception of products that may have a nitrogen padding applied. A warning should be stenciled in the manway area indicating when a nitrogen or other non-life supporting gas is present as a pad. In accordance with DOT Regulation 173.29, Except as otherwise provided in this section, an empty packaging containing only the residue of a hazardous material shall be offered for transportation and transported in the same manner as when it previously contained a greater quantity of that hazardous material. The tank car should have legible stenciling pertinent to the contents, for example, inhalation hazard. The tank car is required to have the appropriate placards placed on both sides and both ends. Here is an example of a stencil on a hazardous material tank car. Preparing the car for movement. 
After loading or unloading and prior to moving the rail car, the equipment must be prepared for the intended movement. Job brief with all employees who are affected and involved with the intended movement to ensure all have a clear understanding of the moves to be made. Check the top and under the car for any misplaced tools. Raise and secure any loading apparatus and employee safety device. Remove any hose or tool from under the car. Remove the electrical grounding and bonding device. Remove the wheel chocks and place in a location that will not cause a tripping hazard. Remove the blue flag. If a derail was used to protect the track, place it in the non-derailing position. If a switch was used to protect the track, align it for the route to be used. Release the handbrake only after the equipment is securely coupled.